So the next part of this podcast is we're going to be talking about the Watergate scandal as Watergate is brought to light in October 20th, 1973. And for those of you that don't know, Watergate is when Nixon is so scared of running and campaigning and leading a quote-unquote clean campaign that he decides to spy on his own campaign and on his opponent's campaign to see what he can do. To be a better president. And it's fascinating because. At this time. In the 70s. Is when. You have what I like to now call the October surprise. Because you have most things that happen. In the election that could change the face of the election during this time. I mean, you have Hunter Biden's computer being taken into question during the Biden administration. You have Donald Trump's grab him by the pussy comment. You have Obama's birth candidacy, even though he was born in Hawaii. Um, you have the whole fear of what could happen during the face of the election at this time. And it all comes down to the Watergate scandal. It resulted in 69 indictments and 48 convictions. And the only reason why I am bringing this up is because Nixon does this during October. And it takes place during what I like to refer to as the October Surprise. So at this time, the Democratic Party's headquarters is being illegally recorded. And you have so many people that don't even know about this at this time. But because of this, and because of all this, it takes it all takes place between June and October, and it all takes place in the Democratic Party's headquarters, which had been used as a hotel at the time. And during this, it was initially covered up. At the time of the Watergate Hotel that was being used as the Democratic Party's headquarters. And you also have, you have kidnappings, you have betrayal, you have everything that could possibly happen in a Ben Affleck movie happens during 1972, during this time. You have Bob Bordard and Carl Bernstein of the Washington Post telling the FBI and relying on quote-unquote deep throats aka Mark Feltz leaks and you have all this information being brought on to you and Nixon's retaliations bringing it closer and closer to him being resigned on live TV and you have him saying I'm not a crook. It is actually a very ingenious way to for Nixon to prove that yeah, he illegally did it and he doesn't apologize for this. He doesn't admit to any wrong guilt. The only thing that happens at this time is, is that there is an 11-minute recording 
that to this day is very mysterious. It is very October. It's very spooky. No one knows what's on this tape. It is supposedly, quote unquote, deleted by Nixon's secretary at the time. And you have Gerald Ford pardoning him in September and October to the point where these men's careers are just over and done. To the point where even... There is a very famous phrase that is used in Hamilton called follow the money. And this is where it actually takes place but uh, during this time because it is said by Mark Wells, felt to Woodward and Bernstein. It is all associated with together and... Um, this is also where the cliche of the parking garage happens because it's him, it's Mark Felt, and it's Woodford and Bernstein all coming together and saying this is what's going on, it is illegal, something's gotta give. So, there's also that cliche as well.